So welcome everybody. Welcome to the SharePoint Dev Ecosystem or PMP Community Call. This is the February 2019 uh, call, and today uh, I'm your host uh, together with Visa, uh, just to help you figure out what we did uh, as a community in the uh, last month and what we will do in the upcoming uh, weeks and months. So. Let's move on. And first of all, uh, uh, let's think about the agenda of today. Uh, we will start having a look at the latest news uh, and the monthly summary of what uh, has been done uh, in uh, uh, January and early February 2019. Oh, then Paola, we Paola, 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 yep. Paola uh, you're not actually moving the slides for any of the rest of us. So you need to oh, really? take, take over the, just the button for you, take over the presentation. Yep. OK. Excellent. Nice trick. <laughs> so now loading again, and as I was saying, we, we we are going to see what what was uh, uh, what happened in the last uh, month almost, uh, and, and somehow what will happen in the upcoming uh, weeks, uh, as well as we will have a couple of demos about uh, uh, modern portal capabilities, as well as about uh, uh, the preview of the upcoming uh, provisioning service that we are going to release as uh, uh, PMP in order to help uh, partners and customers to uh, prove the capabilities of uh, uh, SharePoint Online in the modern UI. And of course, uh, if uh, time will permit, uh, we will have a brief Q&A session at the end. But as you all uh, uh, most likely know, we also have the chat area, uh, which we can use uh, during the uh, call uh, to interact and uh, try to answer uh, some of the questions. So that said, uh, just a, a short recap uh, of uh, uh, how it works uh, PMP uh, on a weekly or bi-weekly uh, basis. In fact, uh, uh, well, uh, PMP as a community uh, provides uh, to all of the members uh, uh, multiple uh, uh, meetings, multiple appointments that you can use to uh, improve your knowledge. First of all, uh, we have uh, the uh, community by itself, and here in the very first line you can find uh, a short link, AKMS, uh, to the SharePoint Dev community, but we also have uh, a bi-weekly SharePoint framework call, and here you can see the uh, short link uh, to join that call, and usually in the SharePoint framework call we talk about about client-side development uh, and all of the topics related to uh, SharePoint framework and client-side development. So, for example, PMPJS, uh, uh, Office 365 CLI, and all the other stuff uh, that works around uh, uh, the uh, SharePoint framework ecosystem. Moreover, we have another bi-weekly uh, call, which is the SharePoint General Dev uh, bi-weekly call, uh, in which uh, we usually talk about uh, the latest news uh, about the SharePoint development using the client side of the model uh, and the Microsoft Graph and all the technologies that you use, let me say, mainly on the .NET side, plus uh, topics uh, uh, related to development development with Power Apps, uh, Microsoft Flow, and all the other uh, power technologies that we have uh, nowadays available to uh, create uh, custom solutions in Office 365 and especially in SharePoint Online. And then we have the monthly calls. This one is exactly one of them. And the monthly calls are on a monthly basis, and we use them uh, usually to share uh, the latest news, the uh, news happened in the last month, uh, and what will happen in the near future. Just as a reminder, there will be a bi-weekly SharePoint Framework call on the fourth of February, a bi-weekly SP General Dev uh, the 21st of February, and the next monthly call will be the 12th of March. Uh, moreover, uh, still as a community and also as Microsoft, uh, uh, we have uh, a bunch of content available. For example, all the dev docs, uh, which you can find at aka.ms uh, spdev-docs, uh, as well as the videos, tons of the videos available on uh, the PMP YouTube channel, as well as uh, the really useful uh, SharePoint Dev Issues uh, uh, repo uh, on GitHub, through which uh, you can create uh, issues uh, requests uh, in order to uh, let us know if there are any uh, bugs, uh, any issues, any requests, uh, and we will try to do our best to support the community through this uh, uh, channel based on GitHub. Okay. 
Okay, cool. <laughs> so, um, what about uh, the last uh, month? Well, as we are used to doing, uh, uh, we just want to share, uh, and we are just um, really proud to share the numbers of uh, PMP and of the entire community uh, in the last month. In fact, for example, uh, we uh, reached again uh, more than uh, 11 billion requests, HTTP requests through the uh, PMP core library. We uh, have the honor to be used uh, by uh, almost 20,000 tenants uh, and uh, about 3,000 of them uh, use the provisioning engine that we provide as PMP and more in general a lot of traffic, a lot of content and a lot of people uh, uh, using all of the resources that uh, the uh, whole community uh, provides to the community itself. So uh, thank you everybody for uh, using, for watching and for producing content that we can share to this uh, great uh, community. A uh, few numbers about uh, the SharePoint framework users. I think that you, these are the best one to talk about this slide. Uh, thank you, Paolo. So um, the numbers are here, like Paolo said, is mainly to show you that you're not alone. Uh, so it's worthwhile to, to really reach out for the community because other people are building on top of the same awesome Microsoft 365 developer platform, uh, which the SharePoint is part of. Now, uh, as part of the SharePoint framework, uh, we've shown these numbers in bi-weekly in SharePoint framework calls, and these are still growing rapidly. So we grew 22% on the usage in January, which is pretty huge leap. And every single Monday, we seem to be uh, making the, the previous re or breaking the previous record on the usage. I do not know why, but Monday seems to be the number one usage day for SharePoint Framework. So the last Monday, which is yesterday, is the is the latest number, which you can see actually on the on the screen as well. We don't actually expose the actual number uh, due to numerous reasons, but you can see the growth uh, from uh, the. November uh, is it January 2018 until uh, today so it's it's insanely how fast people are adapting right now SharePoint framework which is great uh, for everybody I guess that Monday is the most busy day because most of the people come back after a, a great weekend full of energy and they start developing great solutions with SharePoint Framework. That's my guess at least. But what, what's your guess then on Tuesday? Why is it goes down already on Tuesday? <laughs> because they start being tired. <laughs> exactly. Monday blues hits you and then, okay, never mind. Anyway, okay, that's, that's enough on the number. But joke. I think we can move on. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, what else? Uh, well, uh, we, we are working on uh, making it possible uh, to uh, extend uh, the use of, of SharePoint framework in the field of office admin. So there is a, a, a survey that you are kindly requested to uh, submit if you want to share your ideas and your feedback. So uh, stick this uh, URL and please uh, provide your feedback uh, if you like. And as well as uh, there is another survey uh, that uh, maybe we will <laughs> make, maybe not, who knows, uh, but we are uh, discussing and thinking about uh, uh, certifications around the SharePoint framework area. And let me say, uh, I've, personally, I would like also to see a PMP certification or something like that. So uh, <laughs> why not? I can, I, can, <laughs> I can file a comment on this one as well. So, so this one really comes from the fact that uh, I don't know how many of you actually know which are participating on a call that the certification certificates and programs have been uh, updated and all of the certificates are now role-based and right now if you go to the Microsoft learning sites you can see uh, different kind of certificates but you do not actually see any Microsoft 365 developer certifications and this is an interesting area because I think certificates are relatively important for many of our partners because you get to be a silver partner a gold partner and all of that so um, so it's important for us to understand would there be a demand for Microsoft 365 developer certificate, for example, have a dedicated one for SharePoint Framework and dedicated one for Microsoft Craft and dedicated one of then for Microsoft Teams uh, development, as an example. Um, and if, if that's a beneficial thing, uh, we'll obviously uh, collect uh, the feedback from Diane window uh, from the recording and, and that's getting saved uh, automatically as well. Um, but right now the SharePoint framework is, is uh, how would I put it? It's, it's, it's getting to be a mature enough uh, so that we would be able to create a certificate on it because we don't actually uh, introduce similar kind of uh, speed new changes all the time like we did in the past. Well, sure, 1.8 is coming really soon with some new capabilities and, and additional capabilities is coming still, but still, it's it's not at the same speed as we used.
supposed to do. Minus one for certification. Okay. Um, so, and that's, that's uh, sorry, I'm going to spend two minutes on this one. AC's comment is absolutely correct. The challenge of certificates is the fact that when if we start investing on the certificates, that means that we need to keep it up to date uh, because otherwise they're worthless. Um, now, the certificates has a huge value for our partner uh, ecosystem because partners do get their cold certificate, Microsoft partner certifications based on that. So, you need to have two certificates uh, from Microsoft, two MCP is at least minimum in your company to get a Microsoft certified partner statement and all of that. Um, and what I'm personally kind of a concerned on the fact that if uh, if we don't have certificates for Microsoft 365 Dev Platform, we are driving people only to use Azure, and we don't have there's there's no way for you as a SharePoint framework developer to get a stamp that I'm I'm good enough. You you can't prove that you you are good enough to to understand uh, or able to deliver the SPFX uh, customization. Um, don't give it up today. Yeah. So uh, Chris's comment is, is absolutely understandable. Um, I think we, what we're doing here, we're meeting uh, Microsoft Learning people. Uh, well, I'm meeting Microsoft Learning people together with our marketing uh, later this week. Uh, and we're looking into then uh, what does it actually mean? Uh, and we need to figure out the funding commitment on that. We need to keep on updating uh, the certificate after that. And I don't scale. <laughs> For that one at least. Good. Uh, can we get a hand later from us? <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Excellent. Sorry for that. Uh, taking a few minutes on that one, but it's good discussion absolutely in our window, and, and we're recording that one intentionally uh, to get your feedback around this. Uh, so, But I think uh, that's it for that one, so we're not mm -hmm. taking too much time. Uh, yeah, the... yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, on a weekly basis, we also have the SharePoint Dev weekly calls. Uh, so this week uh, there was a, a, a nice call. Uh, so I think, Visa, you are one of the uh, uh, main characters for the <laughs> SharePoint Dev weekly, so you are the best one to uh, uh, let us know what was the main topic this week. Okay, so <laughs> the main topic on this week, we, we had a Joanna Klein uh, walking, uh, visiting us. Uh, Joanna isn't technically a developer, but Joanna is quite often in the role of a business architect or an information architect, which is those people who actually define what the developers are doing or what the technical team is doing. So we need to have, and we need to have understanding what's in the out-of-the-box capabilities of SharePoint so that we do not invest on customizations which are not worthwhile. And that was really the discussion with Joanna uh, uh, during this week. This video went live today in the YouTube channel. And we also talked about the challenges of migrating from on-premises to SharePoint Online and the learnings around that one. And then obviously a huge amount of uh, community uh, articles. So really, really nice discussion. I I can't remember if this is 35 minutes or something like that. <laughs> I also see a nice body in the Oh, I'm back. Okay, I went away. And okay, I'm back. you're back. We lost you for a while. Okay. Uh, I was just asking, Visa, and there is also a nice body in the lower right corner of the screen. Uh, who is this, that guy with a PMP t-shirt? Yeah, so um, that's the potential uh, mascot uh, for SharePoint Framework and PMP. Uh, we're, we're still finalizing the designs. Uh, it's uh, PMP uh, or porc Parker to Porcupine, uh, so uh, most likely. We'll see. Uh, we'll get more announcements on that one when we get uh, later on on the spring as well. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, and uh, as usual, on a monthly basis, we we discuss a little bit about the uh, user voice uh, top 10 list. Uh, can I call it like this? <laughs> so <laughs> we can see uh, what are the most requested uh, capabilities in the user voice, uh, and we can uh, have a short discussion about what maybe will come in the future. Yeah. So on the user voice area, uh, we are slightly adjusting the model again internally uh, around the user voice. So we're trying to make sure that your voice is heard more efficiently and faster across the whole SharePoint engineering. So not just uh, from a dev perspective, uh, but obviously for the future, we're looking into investing on the on the future proven areas. So uh, the ones which are now being worked on is, is the manage metadata term store operations in REST API that is getting worked on because we need also those for first party experiences. Uh, the support for .NET Core with CSAM is actually scheduled for this quarter still. Uh, we are in the mid-February, um, so let's see if we actually get it out during this quarter, but it is actually being worked on, and there's a commitment and people are working on that one. Um, adding support for a single-page application in SharePoint Framework, that is actually coming out as part of the 1.8 uh, 
capability. Um, it might be a slightly different 1.8 release of SharePoint framework. It's, it might be slightly different, but people are used to calling a single page application. Uh, so you will still have the, the SharePoint presence there, but it is a single page application uh, in the, from a development perspective. Um, we'll have more documentation available on that one when the 1.8 will be shipped within a matter of weeks. Let's put it this way. Um, the next the one which has a, the small star is the support for library packages in SharePoint framework, uh, which we're currently actually testing. Uh, so first party is using this already, third party uh, for one, for third party we are right now testing this one. So it is planned potentially going out as part of the 1.8 release of SharePoint framework. And that what it means is that you can actually have a, let's say in quotes, uh, shared libraries uh, which multiple web parts are using more efficiently rather than releasing them as NPM packages packages internally within your library. Um, so it looks really promising, let's put it this way. If it's not in 1.8, it's going to be in 1.9. Um, the last thing which I wanted to call out uh, is the ability to use app-only calls and create modern sites. And, and this is absolutely in the pipeline. We need to get the documentation out. We need to get uh, more insights on that one as well. But there is work and progress on all of this, uh, even though it might seem that we're always having the less, same list of items in the in the monthly call. I do apologize on that, but hey, I can't. Well, it is moving along, so let's put it this way. <laughs> Personally, I'd like to see all of them uh, uh, available, but for sure the very first two items, so the support for management attempts store in REST APIs and the support for the core are really, really uh, fundamental, and I'm really looking forward to seeing them. So yeah. keep on working on them, please. OK. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, so uh, what about the community efforts? Uh, what uh, uh, did we do as a community in uh, uh, January and early February? Uh, there are tons of contributions, uh, new functionalities, new capabilities, and so we need to uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, them. Uh, actually, you also have... Uh, a detailed uh, post on the SPDEV blog. Here you can see the URL uh, to have uh, much more details uh, about what the community did uh, the last month. Wow. Okay. Wow. That was intense. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, of course, we have to say a huge big thank you to all of the community members uh, who contributed uh, to the growth of uh, PMP, whatever it is, PMP Setcore, PMP JS, uh, Office 365 CLI, or whatever else. Uh, we are a huge community, and we are becoming uh, uh, bigger and bigger on a monthly basis, and the list is so long that nowadays we cannot any more read uh, all the names uh, in this slide, uh, but still, thank you guys uh, for what you do and for your effort. At the same time, uh, we definitely need to say thank you to the uh, companies that allow their employees to spend their time working on PMP, uh, because, of course, most of the people work on PMP during their spare time, but there are also uh, quite a lot of companies nowadays uh, allowing their employees uh, to work on PMP during their work time. So it's really, really uh, nice to see that those companies believe uh, in PMP and trust uh, the PMP and the community model. So thank you. And of course, there are mics of people working in PMP as well, and we need to say thank you to them as well, because uh, the community is built not only and made not only by uh, people outside of Microsoft, but also by people inside Microsoft. So thank you again. That said, uh, I think uh, we uh, might move to the uh, demos of today, Visa. So you will lead them. Uh, let us see what is happening in the modern area and what is coming from the provisioning service. Yes, so let's actually do that. And crossing fingers that screen sharing works. Uh, but it looks promising, actually, uh, crossing fingers that somebody con confirms. Done. Loading so far, done. but done. Done. got it. Done. David got it, you got it, so that's already a confirmation that it's across the world. Uh, so let me actually get in here. So what, I, what we wanted to do um, is there's two specific 
uh, separate demos here. So the first demo is actually walkthrough. What are the modern portal experiences and enhancements which we have been releasing within the past two weeks? And uh, for some of you, this might be a recap on the on the blog post and, and what we've been releasing in the tech community, SharePoint blog. But let's actually have a look on those in practice. So you'll see how they actually work in practice and how you can modify them. And we can have a discussion in our window around those capabilities. And then the second demo, uh, which I get to after this one, is around uh, the upcoming uh, uh, self-service provisioning service, um, and I'll explain what it is and the timings when we get to that model. But anyway, let's talk about the modern portal experiences. So I wanted to have two slides first here, uh, which just to explain uh, what, are, what were the announcements. Now, uh, so first of all, there was announcement uh, on 31st of January around the mecha menus, site headers, and footers, which are now rolling out. Uh, they are going to the. They should be available now if you in first release tenants. Uh, for example, in my first release tenants, which I'm going to use as a demo environment, they are available already. Um, and they will be then rolling out uh, worldwide uh, later in March. And this means that you can actually use the mega menu option. Uh, you basically have an option of using the, in quotes, the classic menu or the classic style of a menu, or then you can select the mega menu way of uh, rendering. Um, or, uh, oh, sorry, and then there's a option of uh, defining the header, and I'll get back on that. Uh, you'll see that one in practice uh, pretty soon. So you can actually adjust the header size uh, to be a standard or a compact. Uh, we might actually introduce additional header sizes in future. So you are able to then adjust uh, the rendering logic of the site. Uh, and then uh, there's a uh, the footer functionality in which is around the fact that you're able to uh, define a standard footers inside of the content. Uh, so basically these are right now only for modern pages, but uh, you're able to add static links there, you're able to add images there, uh, you're able to add uh, text uh, in the footer uh, section as well. Now, let me actually show uh, this one uh, in practice. Well, actually, let's go through the, the second demo as well and, and second slide as well. This is how well I prepared for my demo. And the second thing what I want to actually show in practice on the demos, uh, demos uh, is the one which we announced yesterday, which is around the modern page enhancements. And this is also available right now already in first uh, in target release tenants, basically first release tenants. Uh, and it's actually planned to be rolled out by end of February worldwide, so relatively fast. Uh, uh, rolling out. And what that one actually has, and what are the new capabilities, is the custom title region. So you have an, different options of defining how the page uh, header section is getting rendered. Uh, you can use the one, the standard one, which was there already, or then you can use the, the color blocks and all of that. And we'll see that one in practice in a second. You, you can also use the section backgrounds, which actually was missed on another one as well. And you can do custom thumbnails and custom description for the pages uh, in the pages metadata. So kind of a classic scenarios, which are then unblocking people more and more to move from the classic publishing to the modern publishing, now that the modern publishing is more and more enabling uh, and the needed capabilities. Now, let me actually demo both of these uh, in practice. Uh, so let me jump to my demo tenant. And this is just a random E3 tenant. And I'll come back on how these sites were created uh, slightly later. Now, these are basically uh, example sites uh, based on the lookbook. Uh, if you are familiar with the SharePoint lookbook, uh, which is a super useful resource. So let me actually show that one. Uh, in practice, so if I search for SharePoint Lookbook, uh, you can actually find a site owned by our SharePoint design team. Uh, we have a quite massive SharePoint design team nowadays, which is responsible of defining the look and feel and the graphics and the experiences within the modern SharePoint. Um, and they basically then created a, a SharePoint Lookbook for Ignite 2018. Uh, which is then a great resource of getting innovation around the different kind of sites you can actually build uh, using uh, modern SharePoint. Now, these sites, like I said, uh, in here uh, are basically using the lookbook look and feel, and these are coming from the lookbook. So we can use, for example, the marketing landing uh, site as an example, and when we start testing the, the branding capabilities. Now, in here, as an example, uh, so let me actually go to the site settings and let me go uh, change the look option. And this is the new change the look functionality, which you can see here. 
So basically, uh, we have a different way of managing uh, the, or we, we are grouping the all of the branding capabilities in this group. And then from here, we can select, for example, the theme. In my case, my tenant is full of themes. Um, and there's an example themes, uh, an example mockup themes uh, for Contos or whatever companies. Uh, we can actually define the header section. Uh, we can define the header section and we're able to set those settings in the header and come back on the on those settings in a second. Uh, we can define the navigation, uh, which in our case right now is the, the mega menu style navigation. Uh, or, but we can also fall back on the classic, uh, so you can actually absolutely control uh, or do the similar uh, rendering as the classic style as we used to uh, without the mega menu. Oh, and please remember to mute yourself when you're joining on the call. Now, how do you get the mega menu? You need to be in a targeted release uh, option right now. Uh, this is going uh, worldwide uh, relatively soon. So now, if you only have uh, one level of navigations, then you don't actually see the mega menu rendering style. So that means that uh, if I if I click apply and let me actually close this one. Uh, so you need to make sure that you have a tree level uh, tree level navigation section. Uh, in your navigation, and after that, your menus are getting rendered as a mega menu. So uh, it's basically just a matter of having enough links to be able to render then uh, your menu as a mega menu. So it is static links uh, by default in the mega menu. Now, the second thing uh, in here. Um, is really around the site site header. So let's actually modify slightly this site. Uh, we want to actually change the, the look and feel and we're slightly modify the site. We can modify obviously the logo uh, here. Uh, so we can actually modify that easily from the header section. We can also choose if the header is standard or if it's compact. And compact basically means that it's rendering in a smaller uh, area. And obviously, based on your feedback in the future, we might have additional options uh, in the header uh, rendering. Still, the mega menu and everything else remains the same. But if you have a look on the standard, it's much wider. Um, and the, the, the search is in a different location. If I do apply, you can actually see that the search with the compact menu, let me actually close that, is on the same level as the, the following and search side. So we're basically squeezing uh, slightly the size uh, right now. Now, let me go back on to change the look uh, and the header options. Uh, we can also define uh, the background, uh, so uh, which is coming actually from the theme. So depending on the theme of the site, we're able to then uh, use the background and define the background for the site, which makes a lot of sense. Now, now in my case, I'm actually going to do the Contoso electronic marketing because I want to change uh, the header to use a, a orange background. So we get nice look and feel like we have uh, in the in the SharePoint lookbook. So, um, and that's the header section. Now, the navigation was basically the mega menu and cascading. We might have future options here and future settings uh, here as well at some point. And then we have the footer section in here. So let me actually save whatever I was doing here and let me scroll down. So you can see that there's, uh, there's the standard feedback and get mobile app, which by the way, the feedback menu and button, you can actually nowadays set that to be disabled in a tenant level and it's not being rendered in the modern pages. Now, if I scroll down, we can actually see that there's a footer. And you can actually see that even the mega menu, uh, sorry, the feedback menu is getting hidden. So that is getting now fixed uh, from a rendering perspective. Now, how do we actually then modify this footer and what is the footer? Well, first of all, it's really important to understand that now that the footer uh, capability is getting rolled out, it is enabled by default for communication sites. And this might be slightly confusing. Uh, the feature crew made a decision around this one. Uh, so by default for every single communication site, it will be enabled. And I think that's that's included in the announcement, uh, but uh, just to make sure that you are aware how to control that, we also have a documentation in the SharePoint dev docs around the SharePoint site footer. And in here, we are also uh, making sure that you're able to, uh, well, we, we show you the PMP PowerShell commands, how to control is the footer enabled or not. So by default, the footer will be enabled for every single communication site when it's getting rolled out. But you can write a PowerShell script looping your sites um, and then uh, set the footer enabled false. And that will basically then make sure that it's, it's not getting uh, enabled. Now, let me get back on the Contoso uh, market, marketing uh, page and let's actually modify the uh, slightly the footer. So let's go to the footer section. Uh, we can control the visibility. That's basically the same as we can do uh, with, the, uh, with the PowerShell. Uh, let me actually apply that so we get the footer available. 
do I need to move? Okay, there's the footer. There we go. And then uh, I can actually upload a logo. Uh, in my case, I'm going to just upload, for example, the Contoso logo there. Uh, that's a pretty nice looking Contoso logo defined from this one. Uh, we're able to define uh, footer name visibility. So we can say something like Contoso Rocks. Um, and we can actually see that being a static text uh, then on the menu. And then uh, on the footer navigation link, we're able to start adding navigation links in here as well. So if you do something like SPPMP, SharePoint PMP, adding that one there, uh, we can add another one uh, as a static link, aka MS, SPPMP, let's just call support. And let's add one more. Uh, oh, Let's add one more so we can actually see that there's at least three of them. SPP and P um, tools. What are the typical links? Uh, what people are having in footer, and then uh, let's apply that. Uh, well, oops. Let's save, apply. There we go, and close. So we can actually see that we have a SharePoint PMP link, we have a support link, and we have tools links uh, in the menu. And now that we start with the uh, well. The basic setup of the of the footer is relatively simple, as you can see. They, they are static links. Uh, there's no mecha menu capabilities uh, right now in here, but obviously those are being thought of already. So we might have a more expanding uh, or bigger menus of footers uh, in the future here as well. Now, if you would need to have, for example, a custom footer which shows links based on user profile attributes or on which and uh, the, the links might be dependent on the organization where users belongs to, then you would fall back on uh, the SharePoint framework, and then you would implement your stuff using uh, the SharePoint framework uh, settings. Um, the setting, uh, the footer settings uh, are basically on the site uh, site level. So these are not getting leaked. They're not basically, how would I put it, they're not tenant level settings, and they are only on the site level from this perspective, at least when we start with. So that's, that's a uh, important. Now, um, what else did we want to actually show? So uh, let's have a look on the timing. There are a few questions in the chat area is about sure. the sure. mega menu and the footer. Maybe we can Absolutely. share them and try to give an answer. Uh, the very first one I saw is uh, where are the links stored for mega menu and footers? Uh, different location uh, compared with the navigation or same uh, uh, location but uh, with a different approach? So how they do are, they? They are actually stored in a navigation collection. Uh, so they are actually SP web navigation objects. Now, right now, there is no direct access to that navigation uh, entry uh, in the CSAM API. But you can use REST API, and to, in today's uh, SharePoint Dev Weekly, there was an article from Anup Tati from Content and Code, where he actually shows how to manipulate uh, these things using a REST API. So I would d definitely double check that article from Anup. So really good that's, stuff. That's good. So about the upcoming question, which was, uh, are those links configurable with the, the PMP provisioning engine? Uh, let me say that we can Not work yet. on it. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, they but we can be. work on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, and on that one, so basically, obviously, uh, Paolo is one of the key uh, players in the, well, Paolo is our schema designer, let's put it this way. Well, not only just a schema designer for the provisioning engine, but um, we've been now concentrating on the self-service provisioning uh, engine uh, portal. But right after we get that one out for a preview, then we will start working on a new version of the engine as well and the provisioning schema. And at part of that schema, we will then support uh, the footers and headers and a few other things which are in the pipeline. Right, Paula? Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to start working on the next release of the schema. <laughs> yes. A yes. few more very quick questions. What about security trimming audiences and culture in the mega menu and in the footer links? Is there anything? Uh, no, right now, right now, well, uh, right now, as a, from a functionality perspective, uh, these are just static links. So there is no uh, action, there's no permission validation uh, in these links. So uh, is there something coming? Well, that's always depending on the demand. That's always dependent on how many customers are asking uh, uh, those things and is it reasonable to implement that. Now, you can implement some of these kind of capabilities using SharePoint framework, using the header and footer place Placeholders, and we are looking into having more placeholders in the future. So potentially, you might actually have a placeholder for navigation in the future, not 
that you are overriding the whole navigation, but you have a placeholder to go inside of the navigation to add personalized links, uh, which would be then more um, easier way for you to get access on the navigation elements rather than overriding the whole navigation section, which hopefully makes sense. Um, that is that is absolutely in our pipeline. Uh, and uh, one of the key things for the modern portals is that we need to enable more, more placeholders and customer extensibility points. Not customization, <laughs> not customization, not customization point, extensibility points, just to make sure that I'm using the right terminology. So anyway. Cool. I don't see any other uh, urgent question in the chat area, so maybe we can move on. Around it, this topic, yes, indeed. Yeah. Now, okay, so um, pretty cool looking site, and we wanted to also have a look on the modern pages enhancement, so custom title regions and section backgrounds and all of that. So let's actually create a new page here in this site. So if I add a page, uh, it is obviously adding a, a modern page on the site. Um, and then I can modify this. Let me actually uh, upload an image. Uh, for example, let's go one step up and some cool image. Uh, is it actually, was that a big enough? Let me do that. Uh, and then we can obviously modify the image on the right level. And then we can start modifying how the Bates header section actually is getting rendered. So obviously you don't have to use an image and you can get rid of the whole image and then we'll only have a Bates title and that's it. And we could have a custom page uh, really, imp uh, on, really important uh, this article, even though in this case this is actually a page. Uh, and so you don't have to have a, a background there. Uh, you can have a background there uh, using the image and a title. This is kind of the classic static uh, rendering option which we had for the modern pages already. The new options are then using a color block. Uh, so uh, you basically have this color block uh, option and I can do something like uh, text above the title, PMP demo page, uh, so we can actually make it more descriptive, we can add additional texts uh, here as well. I can also send their chat if that makes more sense uh, from your branding perspective, uh, or I can put it on the left as well. No right hand alignment. Uh, well, that's a decision by, uh, done by somebody. Show publishing date, we could actually do that as well uh, if we want to have an alternative text for the image as well. Now, we, we can also do overlap, which basically means that we're overlapping then on that uh, image, which is on the page as well. So now you have multiple options uh, then available on the page. Now, let me actually use the color block, uh, and uh, that's a huge section, obviously, on the page, but in my case, that's uh, completely fine. Uh, let me also uh, do here, is, uh, let's add actually some text, and let me actually copy some lorem ipsum uh, from uh, from the text, and uh, one second, and here we go. We get some content in here. Uh, we could have uh, some content, super important article. Uh, we could absolutely have multiple uh, layouts and sections. We can do images on one side. We can do sections on the other side. Let's actually upload a one image. Uh, that's a super important looking image. Let's add that one on the page. Uh, let's add additional text on the page on the left side. So that's aligning nicely then there. Uh, and then uh, let's close up the page uh, with a full page text section from there. And then the, the new thing uh, which is now getting rolled out is also that you're able to control the background colors of the section. And what it means is that you're able to then use uh, uh, um, the theme color based colors which are basically coming from the theme of the site and use that uh, in the sections of the page as well. Maybe the, the full orange is quite uh, hectic so let me do a slight uh, color there. I'm, I'm not sure is it how visible that is for the other side of the screen uh, and let's do publish. Uh, obviously, uh, you've probably seen this already, so we can actually promote this. We can post the news uh, as a news on a page. Uh, I can click promote option and I can do an email and then I'm basically sending this as an email to somebody. It's a nice looking email then in an inbox, which is then saying, uh, check this out, uh, check this out. Uh, we in, inside of the SharePoint Engineering, we are using this actually quite, quite a much. So uh, all of our 
communications nowadays, the, the in quotes official communications metrics and progress and everything else is being reported as say news articles and then we're promoting those using the, the email based uh, promotions as an example. And obviously it's getting promoted on the on the portals as well. But that's it, let me close that one. Uh, it is a nice, pretty nice looking page. Uh, we have commenting functionalities, all of that, and people are able to like and, and add comments on the page as well. So pretty nice looking getting uh, uh, experience, uh, which is fluent, it's fast, uh, no pushbacks, and, and it's performant as well. Questions on this one, Paolo? I wasn't following up on the enormous number on the iron window. Actually, actually, Bert and Darwin managed all of them, so I think we don't have anything in the queue. Good. Okay. So now. I've been using here uh, this cool looking marketing landing page and, and landing pies and actually I have quite a few of these example sites here and quite often actually people are saying well easy for you to demo those uh, because you can actually always have a, a example content available, example news, example articles and all of that available and in this case let me actually uh, adjust the header slightly and add the background color to the header and voila we have a nice Contoso landing page. Now wouldn't it be cool if you wouldn't only have to look for SharePoint Lookbook and try to replicate these sites to your demo tenants, but you would be able to provision this kind of an example content to your sites. Would that be cool? And that's probably actually pretty cool. That would be a kind of useful. Hopefully, please somebody say yes, and there we go. Now, yeah. uh, <laughs> so let me get back on the on the on the slides for a few slides, and let me do a live demo uh, on this one as well, because I think this is insanely cool, and we're super excited on on. Uh, we're getting really close of shipping this uh, for you uh, available. So, and let me be clear on this one. This capability isn't working yet within your tenant. It is coming in a matter of days, hopefully. Uh, uh, not weeks, rather days. Uh, so this is uh, going to happen quite soon. But this is basically upcoming self-service provisioning tooling. Um, and this really the thinking behind of this one is, is the fact which I already kind of hinted. We have the SharePoint Lookbook, which are insanely cool. Our design team and designers have been designing cool sites, which we used in Ignite. But then obviously customers are saying that, well, I would love to have those kind of sites in my tenant or in my demo tenant or uh, consultants and pre-sales people are saying, well, I could actually do modern SharePoint and sell modern SharePoint to my customers, but I need those demo sites. And that's precisely what we want to actually provide for you. So we're introducing uh, the SharePoint provisioning service. And like I said, not yet available. It's an internal testing, uh, but we want to make sure that you are aware that this is coming quite soon. Uh, and this is basically designed to provide you a standardized set of, set of uh, uh, templates which you can then apply uh, to your tenants. And these are templates which are based on uh, the uh, based on the templates which we used uh, in the Ignite 2018. Uh, so these are basically templates which were created as a uh, as part of the SharePoint uh, Lookbook templates. But it's not only that, it's also that we're promoting uh, and providing you the SharePoint starter kit and additional solutions available using this centralized uh, service. Now, and this is really basically uh, enabling a tenant administrator to provision demo structures uh, of and with actual content. Uh, to their tenant. So not, you don't actually have to create sample news, you don't have to create sample events we, uh, and images. We're actually adding all of that content for you automatically. Um, it deploys automatically customizations in the tenant level. So it basically deploys SharePoint framework solutions, uh, site designs. Uh, in future, it will provision Microsoft Teams uh, structures for your tenant as well. The main idea is that it drives adaption uh, because it will give you as a customer uh, the easy way of kind of a clicking through then and, and getting the feel of how does the modern SharePoint actually look like and how does it actually feel like. Now, these are actually BMP uh, tenant templates, uh, which are happening, uh, which we have created as a SharePoint engineering has created, and then we're offering them for you as a uh, click through uh, experience. And I, and I will walk through uh, the whole scenario. Now, obvious idea is that we have uh, polished and fine tuned demo content, which customers can use, partners can use, anybody can use, uh, so uh, as easy as possible. And this really comes down on the fact that uh, as part of the Ignite, as part of the SBC last, last year, people were really kind of saying that, well, 
I've, that's awesome looking sites. We really need to have and see what's possible within the portals and how could I automate creation of multiple site collections and all of that. And, and that's precisely what this one is doing. If you're a consultant, you can use this as a pre-sales demo tool uh, because in a matter of 10 minutes or in a matter of five minutes, you can provision a cool looking portal landing page. And then you can modify that to using a custom theme or custom colors. Uh, so it will hopefully make your life easier when you're having a pre-sales discussions. Um, and uh, Fast Track uh, is doing also uh, using these. So uh, we are actually uh, building solutions together with Fast Track uh, and Tim Templates. Uh, there was a, I saw that there was a custom portal, custom uh, learning uh, was mentioned on the iron window as an example of a template which is coming from Microsoft. And this really comes down on the actually on the on using the PMP tenant and site templates. Uh, so basically, um, the PMP tenant templates uh, roots are from a, a time of 2015 when we introduced the remote provisioning techniques and and then uh, last year uh, in SPC NA uh, SharePoint conference uh, in Las Vegas we introduced the SharePoint starter kit which was kind of a one discussion point or one step forward on, on having you an easily easily usable demos but still we didn't want to stop just on a SharePoint starter kit and which is an awesome solution as such but we wanted to actually provide more general templating model, which he can then more easily take advantage. And we work together with our design team, uh, and we're then introducing additional set of templates as needed. So you can kind of predict that there's a SharePoint conference coming up now in Las Vegas again on this May. Um, we will introduce a new set of uh, templates, a new set of capabilities uh, as part of the service for you to take advantage after the SPC NA this year. Now, just an example from a, uh, if somebody is kind of, well, but is it actually reliable enough? Well, the BMP provisioning engine uh, is used, uh, was used as an example, more than 3,000 tenants uh, during January 2019. Uh, so it is working really well. We've been testing these templates now uh, in a multiple tenants, and it seems to be looking extremely good uh, for this template. So sure, there always might be bugs here and there, uh, but luckily we can actually fix those quite fast together with community and address any, any additional gaps uh, which might be there. So let's actually have a look on uh, what does this mean in practice. So let me jump back on the on the browser and let me use the same uh, session where I am. So how did I get my cool looking uh, marketing landing page available and provisioned uh, to my, my tenant? Or uh, what we should be using? We could use the Contoso landing, this one. We can, let's use this one. doesn't really matter that much. Uh, example content, there's even some articles and, and presentations getting provisioned on this one. I haven't modified the template at all after I applied that. Now, we'll repeat this gajillion time. Uh, not yet available within your tenant, still in internal testing. Uh, so it is not working in your tenant until we will actually release this, and which is planned to happen within a matter of days rather than weeks or months. And there will be a blog post and announcements in social media when this is available for you. But I wanted to actually make sure that people know how easy it is then to apply these things to your sample tenants or even to your, uh, your normal tenants. Now, how does it actually work in practice? Uh, you come to the service, uh, you can see descriptions, uh, 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 service description, you can actually read more insights, what does it actually do? And, and uh, it also pinpoints what it might do based on a template, it provisions stuff in a tenant level or only in a site collection level. Right now, when we start, we, all, we do require that you're a tenant administrator. We might actually be able to reduce that to be a site collection administrator if we target only site collection in the future. We're looking into that option at some point, not yet though. We start by demanding that people are actually tenant administ administrators who are using this uh, solution. So these are basically uh, promoted templates to start with, and then we have multiple set of additional templates which are available, uh, which you can provision to your tenants. And in this particular setup right now, you can actually see custom, custom learning as an example, or uh, the SharePoint page transformation UI as one of the templates. Uh, also, Starter Kit is available, which is a much more complex template than just a, a simple landing page. But let me start my Condoso Enterprise landing. So let me choose that one. Uh, I can have a look on what the template is all about. And then if I choose to use this one, I can simply click Add to my tenant which will then validate that I'm a tenant administrator. So this doesn't work unless you're a tenant administrator uh, right now. And then you need to consent. And in my case, I've already consented. So my tenant administrator is now signed into this application. 
And then uh, based on a template, uh, I can override settings. I can define the site URL. In my case, let's actually, I'm not going to override an existing site, which technically is possible. Uh, so I'm going to create a unique uh, site collection uh, like that. Uh, what you can do also is that you're able to select an existing theme if you want to, uh, or you can apply a custom theme. So if you need to set up a, a uh, let's say, if, if you need to set your component colors to the sites which are getting provisioned already at the provisioning time, you can do it from here as well. Or you can uh, assign the theme afterwards when the site has been provisioned either way. Now, in our case, let's make it as simple as possible. I'm just saving time uh, and basically clicking provision. There's the co uh, confirmation. So what is actually getting provisioned isolated site collection. It can use existing URL if needed. In this case, we're creating a new one, branding elements uh, in that specific site collection, example content in that specific site collection. Well, that sounds reasonable. So I'm gonna actually provision that. And there we go. The provisioning uh, of your template has started. So the provision, actual provisioning is asynchronous, um, which is mentioned here, but people always do not actually uh, read the message. Uh, you will get an email on the SharePoint when the modern site is ready for, uh, for you to access. And what happened on the background right now is that we, we obviously have Azure uh, in Microsoft Azure, uh, hosted by Microsoft, uh, there's a, a multi-tenant Azure application, which is then responsible of getting this one provisioned with uh, the access which was granted by the tenant administrator. Now, if you do not want to grant this level of a high permissions to your tenant, you can actually use these templates in future uh, manually as well using PMP PowerShell. So we are exposing all of the templates which are visible in this portal also as a templates which you can download as an individual templates. You can sign in against your tenant using PMP PowerShell and you can apply to your tenant uh, using PMP PowerShell or C sharp code. So if you don't like the fact that this is asking too much permission, so up to you, uh, how do you wanna handle this? Now, now, now that the provisioning is happening, I can actually see in uh, one of my other screens uh, that the provisioning is happening. What I wanted to do is that I wanted to actually briefly explain what's happening behind of the scenes. So behind of the scenes, uh, basically this is an Azure AD uh, application, which right now added a task to the queue, uh, which then requested uh, Microsoft own uh, Azure instance to start the creation of the site collection with the given template. Now, right now, this template uh, repository is not yet open, but it will be open relatively soon whenever the service is available. So as part of the releasing of the service, we'll release also the templates, which are perfectly available for you to use as well. Um, so the templates themselves, uh, you can use them if you don't want to, uh, again, ask uh, or grant to that high permissions to your tenant uh, through the centralized service. In the actual background, what happens is that there's a web job storage queue, which is then firing an Azure web job, which is then starts uh, using the BMP core extension, which actually has the BMP engine, a tenant template engine behind of it, which is then applying and, well, first of all, creating the site collection and then applying the template and a content and a theming and whatever is inside of the template to that site collection. So all of that is happening now automatically and then we'll get an email uh, when uh, the, the execution is completed. This solution itself uh, will be open source. Uh, we, we can't actually do some reason, so complexities of bureaucracy, we can get it open on the day when we release uh, the service to preview, but it will be uh, open sourced uh, relatively fast uh, after the preview period actually starts. And we're looking into making the whole service open source for you. If you're a partner and you want to provision and you want to provide this kind of a solution for your customer with the dedicated templates, uh, we can actually make that, you can make that happen. Everything will be MIT sourced, uh, so we don't care if you use the same technologies uh, in your solutions as well. Now, the provisioning takes like four to five minutes. I'm watching that on my uh, one uh, other screen, so I actually know exactly when it ends. But when we're waiting that for ending, let me actually jump uh, here on the template and let's get back in here and we can actually have a quick look on what are the templates which are available uh, within the service. Now, like mentioned, uh, we have simple templates like the Contoso Enterprise Landing. It only has some example content. It's basically a site collection with example content. As, and so it doesn't do that many configurations in a tenant level. Now, the template, because these are PMP tenant templates, they actually can be, in, well, well, I wouldn't say insanely complicated, but they can be quite complicated, like the SharePoint Starter Gate. SharePoint Starter Gate is 
potentially something which you are aware of already. It has its own GitHub repository, and it actually deploys uh, 15 web parts, extensions, plenty of other stuff as well. So that's actually automating a lot of the stuff in a tenant level for you, and it actually provides a pretty nice looking custom portal available with custom web parts, custom content to your tenant. This actually has three different site collections, landing hub sites, and then two, two uh, sub site collections associated to the hub site. It has an installation of custom framework solution with 17 web parts, custom site designs and site scripts available, and tenant themes. It's really important when people are using this service that they actually understand that what the templates are actually deploying, which they select to use. So because in this case, as an example, it is creating a new custom hub site. It is also de deploying a custom theme to the tenant level. And that means that uh, other people in a tenant are aware of and visible uh, and can see the 17 additional web parts because those are getting deployed using the tenant scoped uh, deployment. So uh, it's, it's important that you always carefully read what's in the templates. Uh, many of these templates, if I go back in here, uh, are really around the lookbook templates. So they basically concentrate on having a content, example content available. Now, in my case, uh, here's a give site collection as an example. Uh, which is a, just an example content, uh, how things could look like in a GIF site collection. The marketing landing was actually provisioned using uh, the, the tooling as well. Uh, so we got basic uh, nice core cool layout with some example content available uh, then to start with. Uh, there's a Contoso landing. This is basically what we're right now in progress of deploying. And I'm hoping that we don't run out of time. Oh, it success already two minutes ago. Um, uh, basically, we selected this Condosa uh, layout to be the one which we wanted to provision uh, for the test. And then there's a few other templates available, but example content, example structures. So let's actually get back on here. I'm going to copy the URL which we created. And let's go see what we actually got. So if I go SPPMP, uh, so in my tenant, uh, SharePoint, and pasting that one crossing fingers, woohoo, we have a custom portal, custom content, custom images, custom example, and news available, uh, created with the identity of the administrator, because that's the, 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 uh, the identity which we're using in the execution. Uh, but it actually demonstrates what's available and what's possible within the modern uh, portals. Hopefully, you find this kind of stuff useful, um, and hopefully, this will then help you to understand how what is possible uh, within the uh, modern SharePoint uh, from that perspective. Now, I think that's it for the demo because we are also uh, obviously <laughs> always running out of time because I'm talking too much. So let me actually flip back on the normal slides <laughs> on the on the presentation. Any yeah, questions? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, in the in, in the queue in the chat area, there were some questions about the performances of the service. But of course, it really depends on the size of the package that you are applying. If you are creating just one site collection with uh, just small amount of content, it will be a matter of few minutes. If you are provisioning the starter kit, it's a matter of 15, 20 minutes, because the starter kit will create multiple site collections, a site hub, and stuff like that. So it really depends. Uh, there's no unique answer, I would say. Right. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. And there weren't many other questions uh, uh, still open because we tried to cover them in the chat area in the meantime. So uh, I think we are we are good. We are in a good shape. Good. So just a reminder for the next uh, uh, SIG call, the SharePoint Framework SIG call, which will be uh, on February the 14th. And, uh, of course, as usual, uh, uh, we also have uh, uh, the uh, Q&A section, which actually we already covered today uh, during the presentation, during the demos. So I think uh, mainly because we are running out of time that we can skip it now, unless there are really uh, burning questions in the chat area. But we just have a couple of minutes, one now. So <laughs> I think uh, we can close up. 
and uh, just a quick comment yeah. actually so um, yeah. just before we are closing up on the last minute so there's a there, we are having an interesting discussion with Hugo Bergner uh, around the need of having a, a triple like or a kind of a sample catalog um, uh, available for the community to take advantage um, and that's something let's let's talk about that one slightly more on Thursday's SharePoint framework community call um, I think we have old even old mockups available around that one um, the whole point being on the fact that um, having a sample in a GitHub doesn't really expose the sample for that widely, so it would be cool to have a sample portal uh, externally exposed uh, for internet, which people could actually use. But let's talk about that one on Thursday. Um, so that should be the, because that takes more than a few minutes. Yeah. So uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you again for joining this call. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, hope to see you again uh, in the upcoming SIG calls and in the upcoming monthly call. Thank you for joining us uh, and stay well and enjoy SharePoint Framework. Thank you. Bye-bye.